Man, Jamin Davis, you've been jamming. <laughs> On Instagram. About Jack Del Rio. Ron Rivera. Your displeasure in the coaching staff is zeroing you out singling you out on your performance in the last couple of games. And, you know, I, I will say this. I think that this time, you know, I, I think that Jamie Davis has a, a little bit, you know, I, I don't blame him too much, honestly. Uh, because, you know, Davis played better, I thought, in game two. Now, that's not to say that I think that he's playing at a first-round draft pick status because I don't think he is. I think he's been pretty good with um, blitzing. Blitzing, I think he's there. You know, he, he had a sack in the first game that, unfortunately, because of the secondary, um, wound up being wiped off the books, but he had a sack last week against uh, Goff. So, I mean, he's able to pressure the quarterback. Um, he did have, um, he did go out in coverage a couple of times, and, and, well, he probably went out in coverage more than that, but, you know, one time that we actually did see where they went to him and they they tested him, uh, the receiver uh, couldn't catch the ball, but he was right there. Um, I thought he played better, and, you know, I have to say that with Ron Rivera talking about how that we're running out of time with Jamin Davis. I mean, those are pretty strong words. And I, don't, I think that Rivera and company are starting to feel like that Jamin Davis was a big swing and miss, and he may have been. I know a lot of us fans last year were very disappointed at his play in his rookie season. He just did not perform well at all last year. Um, this year, you know, so far, I mean, he's made his presence known a couple of times, but, you know, for one reason or the other, uh, the coaching staff has really zeroed in on him. Now, you have to keep in mind, us as fans, we're looking from the outside, right? So we don't know what's going on behind closed doors. We don't know what type of team player Jamin Davis is, right? Um, and we don't know what, like, for instance, and maybe we'll see it today, I haven't heard of, of other teammates coming up and saying, well, wait a minute. Now, that, that's just not right. I mean, those teammates are, you know, they also respect the coaching staff quite a bit. So they may feel that it's not right behind closed doors and may, you know, privately tell Jamie Davis that. But, you know, who knows? It could be something that where Jamie Davis is just not putting in the time uh and, you know, the film, I don't know what's going on. But I do know that the coaching staff, for whatever reason, is not happy with Jamin Davis. And even if Jamin Davis is showing a little bit of improvement, it's not enough improvement for them to be happy with him. You know, maybe it's the little bit of improvement if he was a fifth rounder, a true fifth rounder, and they would look at it and be like, you know what, he's... he's He's starting to develop. Good for him. But, you know, I will agree with this. If you're drafted in the first round, then you are expected to be a presence known right from the get-go. And Jamie Davis was not that at all last year. And this year, I think he's trying to make that step ahead. But can I say that he's starting to look like that first-round pick that Washington picked up last year? I mean, I can't say that just yet because as a linebacker, if you're going to be a first-round pick, you can't just be great in one thing. You've got to be well-rounded. you got to be able to to blitz uh, 
properly, which I mean, so far, I think Davis has been pretty, pretty good with the blitz. Uh, but I think you also have to be great in coverage so far. Jamie Davis, I don't think has been great in coverage. Um, now there have been some mismatches. There were some mismatches, of course, in that first game. I don't know if you would blame Davis for that, but you know, he got burnt quite a bit all day long in that mismatch. Um, so, uh, you know, I, 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 that's, that's just what I would say. I would say that certainly if you're going to be a first rounder, you got to be, you got to let your presence known. Let me tell you this though. Now, I don't remember what round that Wilbur Marshall was, was drafted in because he was originally a Chicago bear and then Washington picked him up right before, um, their uh, run for the Super Bowl in 87, or it may, it may have been actually during that year. But uh, anyway, um, Wilbur Marshall, oh no, I, I'm sorry, I take that back. Uh, I think they picked him up um, later on, so it might have been in the, the 91 Super Bowl. My bad. Anyway, Wilbur Marshall, linebacker, he was great in coverage. He was great in blitzes. I mean, you know, he was all over the field. And he was a beast. Now, he learned from the best because guess what? He was playing on that defense with Ron Rivera and that 85 Bears team. So, you know, he knew about playing at a very high level and of course at that point he was a seasoned veteran but you know that just goes to show you and and it's not just him that we had a lot of you know I could name like Neil Okowitz guys like that um that they were great in coverage as well as blitzing I mean you know these guys just did their jobs and you know I'm seeing a big difference you know if you go back and you watch Watch the Super Bowls that the Redskins were in and just watch that how that these teams, how these players did their jobs. And then watch the mistakes that you see with some of these players. Um, now, I, I don't want you to think that I'm always down on the players. I really don't want you to think that. But I just want you to understand the, the philosophy of doing your job. Okay, that's what I want you to understand. I think a lot of times that players want to to make the highlight reel, and because of that, it's hit or miss. And when they miss, they miss big, and then they wind up blowing a huge play. And go back and look at those Joe Gibbs coach teams, those uh, Richie Pettibon defenses and you'll see players that did their jobs and even when they got beat they came back and they you know next drive next play whatever they shut it down now it did help that you had hall of famers like daryl green on your team but there you go you had guys who strive to be that that good and you know do we have players on our team that's striving to be that good? I don't know. I think a lot of times you have players who are striving for a payday. And, uh, you know, that that's there's a big difference. You know, you, you play good enough to get paid, and then, you know, you just you start to, to show your vulnerabilities. And I, I'm, I'm thinking that's what happens a lot of times. So, anyway, Jamin Davis... You know, overall, I can't really blame him for feeling like he's being targeted by the coaching staff. But at, at the same time, I'll also say this. I have not been that impressed by Jamie Davis. Um, I don't think he's been worth that first-round draft pick. But we're only two games into the season, so I'm going to be patient and we'll see what happens. But if he gets, you know, demoted or benched or whatever halfway through the season you could pretty much say he's not going to be here next season. They will get rid of him for sure. Let me know in the comment section what you think. Uh, Jamie Davis jamming on, on uh, Instagram there. And I will talk to you in the next one. Hey, if you want to support this channel, 
You can support this channel by subscribing to the Washington Football Maniacs. Please subscribe to this channel. I need your subscriptions. And when you do, make sure you hit that notification bell because you don't always know when I'm going to come out with videos. Um, you, so make sure you definitely get notified, subscribe, like, share this video, comment in the comment section. Uh, you can also support me in other ways, and I will show you that right now. Seem to get out. But something deep inside won't let me quit. I swear